السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today إن شاء الله we'll learn how we will evaluate and how we will do the audit for the isolation precaution. This element it is number three from two main B, the infection prevention and control key measures. It's including uh, 25 sub elements. The activities for the auditing we need for documentation, staff interview, observation, and medical record. And the scoring it will be zero or one or two or not applicable. The first sub element B3.1. There are written policy and procedure for standard and transmission based precaution, including type, duration of isolation, patient transport, and visitor control. For this, we need for documentation to we can review it and we can audit this sub element. We need to review the policy and procedure for the isolation precaution, which should be comprehensive and cover all the standard and transmission based precaution including also the type duration of isolation patient transport and visitor control also it should be fully applicable and can be applied and comply with the hospital scope of services and also base it on scientific reference this uh, reference it should be approved by ministry of health like cdc who and epic and uh, we want to mention here it's not allowed To, they will use hospitals as reference. It is not acceptable. And also the policy and procedure, it should be signed from authorized person like medical director or hospital director. And also it should be approved by the infection control committee and it's valid and updated within two to three years or when they indicate it. Sub element uh, B3.2. There is a clinical hand washing facility with hand-free operation inside the patient room or in the ante room if available. We need for observation to we can evaluate and audit this sub-element. During your visit for the hospital and the departments inside the hospital like ICU, AR, PICU, isolation ward and other clinical area, you need to observe the availability of the clinical hand washing facility. Uh, the hand washing facility uh, uh, with hand free operation hand washing sink it must be available in all the patient room inside the patient room or in the uh, ante room if available this is to be used by the healthcare worker as uh, indication and also uh, we want to mention here that the hand washing sink inside the toilet or restroom does not fulfill the requirement of this uh, sub element the, the the hand washing facility we mean that it should be inside the patient room or in the ante room if available sub element b3.3 Patient room is provided with the private toilet and shower. For isolation room in ICU or in ICU, CCU, toilet and shower are optional. For this, we need for observation to we can audit and evaluate this sub element. During your visit for the ER and isolation ward and another uh, clinical area, you need to be uh, check the availability of the private toilet and shower, and it should be attached with the patient room. Uh, it's not accept that the toilet and uh, shower it should be sharing with patient no each patient room it should be have one toilet and shower attached with the patient room but for the uh, critical area like icu in icu and ccu it is not mandatory just it is optional that the patient room inside that critical area it is without uh, with with toilet and shower or without toilet and shower but another department as we mentioned it is mandatory to they will have a private toilet and shower for each patient room sub element B3.4 personal protective equipment and alcohol hand rub solution are available outside the patient room at the corridor or in the ante room if available for this sub element we need for observation to we can uh, evaluate and we can audit this sub element you need to observe the availability of personal protective equipment and hand hygiene supply outside the patient room it should be kept outside the patient room in the corridor or in the ante room if available and you should be observed if there is any personal protective equipment are kept inside the patient room you can open the drawers and check if any item is kept inside 
Also, we are putting the or keeping the uh, person protected outside the room because uh, healthcare worker uh, they must be wear uh, the personal protective equipment before entering the patient room. Also, you will absorb if the personal protective equipment it is well organized and it is not kept in open, so as to they will avoid the risk of contamination from dust and they will not happen any accidental or any accident for splash or anything can be make this personal protective equipment contaminated sub element p3.5 all personal protective equipment are doffed inside the patient room except in 95 respirator which is removed outside airborne infection isolation room after a closure of the door of patient room or ante room if available for this uh, sub element we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element for the observation you need or you can observe the healthcare worker when they are leaving the airport infection isolation room you should be sure that all the person protective equipment is will be doffed inside the patient room except the n95 respirator which should be removed outside the patient room or outside the airport isolation room after they will be closed the door of the patient room maybe you will be absorbed so healthcare worker they are coming outside of patient room with, with the gloves and gown and this is not acceptable because they should be removed inside the patient room also you can do the indirect verification you can check uh, the, the waste uh, container that's for inside or outside the patient room and you will check what is the uh, personal protective equipment it is inside the waste uh, container because the outside uh, waste containers it should be have only the N95 respirator and the inside uh, uh, waste container inside the patient room it should be have all the personal protective equipment it should be have it except the N95 respirator again it should be outside the patient room for the interview, you can do the interview with the staff and you can ask them or ask the staff about the type of personal protective equipment they will be used to they will be deal with patient under airborne isolation and also you can give them some examples to they can or they will be stimulated in front of you the donning and doping of personal protective equipment for patient uh, under isolation or under airborne isolation like you can give them as example if you have patient with uh, pulmonary TB or patient critically ill COVID-19 patient and they will be started and you will be absorbed them if they do it the donning and doping uh, correctly and also you can ask the staff uh, or the healthcare worker uh, today will what is the uh, uh, how is the steps of the doffing of personal protective equipment after they will be deal with patient under uh, airborne isolation precaution and you can ask them about the steps and also what is it will be uh, should be removed inside and it should be removed outside of the patient room or outside of the uh, airborne infection isolation room sub element p3.6 Visitors receive proper instruction from the assigned healthcare worker before entering into an isolation room and they should comply with the recommended isolation required precautions. For this sub element we need for observation and staff interview to we can
For the observation, you need to observe the presence of clear sign with Arabic and English language. It should be with Arabic and English language that used to be uh, to educate and guide the visitor uh, for the type or about the type of isolation precaution that should be taken before visit the patient inside the isolation uh, room. And also, you will be absorbed the availability of isolation and education sign. Uh, it should be outside isolation room doors. And also, you will be observed uh, any visitor. Uh, maybe you will find some visitor and you will be absorbed uh, uh, if they are compliant with the isolation precaution as per staff instructions. The staff, they should be given them the instructions and they will be follow this uh, instruction for the isolation precaution. For the interview, you will ask the healthcare worker about the proper way to educate the visitor of isolated patient. You can ask them when we will educate the visitor. What is the type of education we are giving to the visitor? It will be depend uh, on the transmission based precaution for the patient and also why we are giving this education for the visitor. We are giving this education for the visitor because we want to prevent them from getting the infection. And at the same time, maybe you will find some visitor inside the isolation department. You will be asked them if they have received instruction and education before they will visiting isolated patient. Sub element B3.7, a logbook is available and used for all individual entering the rooms of isolated patients with airborne infection, like or example pulmonary tuberculosis. For this sub element, we need for documentation and staff interview to can or to we can uh, evaluate this uh, sub element. Uh, during our visit for isolation ward or other patient care area, uh, like uh, critical care area, ICU, in ICU, PICU, you need to review the logbook they have it. It's used for all individual entering the room of isolated patient with airport infection. You need to be sure that the, there is a logbook. It should be complete and filled uh, appropriately. It have the name, designation, duration of exposure, and personal protective equipment used, and also the signature. Uh, also, this logbook it should be. Uh, uh, including all the healthcare worker, not only the doctor or aunt nurse, it should be included also the respiratory therapist, x-ray, technician, and support service staff. Also, you should be sure that the visitor also, they are including in this logbook, or it can be, uh, uh, or they can be used, uh, same this logbook, but separate for the uh, visitor. But it is important we will include in the visitor, and also it should be complete that. Uh, inside this logbook. For the interview, you can ask or you will ask the healthcare worker about the logbook that was used for healthcare worker and visitor and who had entered the isolation room if there is any uh, patient in the isolation room under the airborne isolation precaution. And you can compare also uh, with the uh, file of the patient. You can uh, uh, just checking the doctor note and you will see if the doctor he do this his round and he visit the patient and you can compare between the logbook and also the uh, medical file for the patient. Also, if there is any procedure done for the patient, you can check who's entering to the room uh, from the medical file for the patient, like uh, example, a portable x-ray or there is any other procedure at the same time and you will compare it between the logbook and the medical file for the patient. This is if it is uh, the room or there is patient under airborne isolation precaution. But if it is not occupied the room at the time you are doing the visit, you need to ask them uh, what is the last time there is a patient uh, or there is admitted patient uh, under airborne isolation precaution and you can compare his answer with the logbook book and with the information inside this uh, lookbook and also you can ask the staff about the purpose and uh, important of this logbook and this is to ensure that there are awareness about it here we can see the isolation logbook for the healthcare worker and in the next slide we will see the logbook for the visitor you can see all the information it is inside this uh, form the patient name 
as the patient diagnosis, file number, type of isolation, and it have all the information for the healthcare worker who will be entered to the uh, uh, isolation room for a uh, patient under uh, airborne isolation precaution. There is the staff name, the designation, what is job, and so the date time in and time out and also the type of precaution that will take in already we mean the personal protective equipment and also the signature of the healthcare worker who entered to the room this is the logbook for the visitor you see it is the same have all the information about the patient and also it's have the visitor name relation for with the patient also the date time in and time out and also the type of precaution taken uh, the personal protective equipment and also the signature of the visitor sub element b3.8 non-critical patient care equipment are single use or dedicated for one patient or if not available and shared equipment have been used Proper cleaning and disinfection of shared equipment must be strictly followed. For this, we need for observation and staff interview to we can audit and evaluate this sub-element. During your audit round for the clinical uh, area, you can observe the availability of single-use non-critical devices for the isolated patient like stethoscope, blood pressure monitor cuff, and also you can absorb the staff practice after dealing with the isolated patient. You can see if this non-critical care item are used, it is uh, single-use or dedicated for the same patient or it will be shared for multiple patients. And after that, if you found it, it is shared, uh, the non-critical item is shared between the patient, you need to be uh, sure that the uh, staff, they are strictly applied uh, by appropriate cleaning and disinfection of this shared equipment. You will do the interview and you will ask the staff about the items and equipment that are used for isolated patients. And if it is single use or he is answering you it is single use, you can ask the staff to he will be uh, bring for you a sample of single use non-critical patient care equipment. He will bring it for you from the uh, store. And uh, what I mean, it is the, uh, the store inside this uh, department. But if he is told for you this non-critical uh, patient care equipment, it is shared between the patient, you will be asking him about how he will handle this shared uh, items and also how they will be uh, cleaning and disinfection process. He should be explained for you. And at the same time, uh, you can give task to this staff to they will be simulate cleaning and disinfection of blood pressure monitoring cuff. You can assess if the staff are uh, trained and use it appropriate disinfection or disinfectant with recommended contact time. Sub element B3.9, the sign used to indicate categories of isolation precaution are clear and visible for healthcare worker and visitor in bilingual Arabic and English, color coded and compatible with the diagnosis. Example, contact for uh, green and airport blue and droplet pink or red. It's preferable to use the Ministry of Health approved isolation signs. For this, we need it for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit uh, this sub element. During your audit round, you will be sure and you will observe the availability of isolation precaution signs indicating category of each type of isolation precaution, and it should be clear and visible for healthcare worker and visitor. Also, it should be bilingual by English and Arabic and color-coded and compatible with the diagnosis. 
it should be contact uh, it should be green air pump blue and droplet pink and it is preferable to they will be used the moh approved isolation sign and especially for the moh hospitals uh, the sign uh, is compatible uh, with the patient condition and isolation type you can check if they have any patient and the isolation precaution you can check the sign outside the room and you will be compared between the diagnosis and transmission mode they have the patient and the uh, signs outside uh, the room also here we want to mention that the isolation sign must be posted only if the room or the cubicle is occupied with patient required isolation you can ask uh, nursing staff uh, to show you the isolation sign used to indicate the category of isolation precaution uh, you will be asking them to you check and compare it is correct isolation precaution and it is mentioned both the english and arabic uh, language and also you can assist the knowledge of the staff by asking them about the uh, type of isolation sign required for a specific disease you can give example for airport like uh, uh, mazes or tb you can give uh, an examples for contact like uh, mdro so on this is to you will be assist the knowledge of the staff sub element b3.10 the receiving unit or facility is informed about the required isolation precaution and to ensure that availability of appropriate personal protective equipment for this we need documentation and medical record and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element you need to review and check the policy and procedure uh, and also the protocol for the transportation for the patient under isolation precaution to other unit or other facility and also you need to check presence or any infection control uh, form or not the two emphasis uh, the required isolation precaution and information about appropriate personal protective equipment and also during your visit or audit you can ask the staff to they will show you any use it for for the transportation of the patient under isolation precaution with a clear mention of the required of personal protective equipment this should be additional to the verbal communication the, the verbal communication is not uh, enough to will be sure that they are informing the unit or the facility uh, about the uh, isolation precaution and about the appropriate personal protective equipment they should be the its documentation or documented in the uh, medical file for the patient for the interview you can ask the staff randomly about the protocols to uh, be followed before transporting any patient under isolation precaution to other department or any other healthcare facility and also you can ask the staff about or how they will ensure that the appropriate personal protective equipment is available based on required isolation precaution sometimes the patient he need for another investigation and this investigation maybe it is not at, at the same hospital need to transfer for another hospital like CT scan like ultrasound at this the responsibility for transporting unit to inform the receiving department or facility about the type precaution and availability of required personal protective equipment in order to ensure safety of the staff sub element B 3.11 the transfer of patient under isolation precaution is restricted to medically necessary purposes isolation transportation card must be used and should be consistent with the patient diagnosis color coded posted in arabic and english and indicating the type of precaution required for staff it's preferable to use the ministry of health approved isolation transportation card and through less crowded traffic route for this sub element we need for observation and staff interview can uh, to we can audit and uh, evaluate this sub element for the observation you need to observe the pathway for transferring a patient under isolation precaution you need to be sure and check the pathway they are used to transfer this patient and also uh, they have a specific way uh, special for transfer patient under isolation precaution also if they have any dedicated elevators uh, they are used to transfer uh, uh, this patient or patient under isolation uh, precaution also you need 
to observe and check the isolation transportation card and you should be sure that it is by two language by Arabic and English and also it should be the color coding of isolation transportation card it is compatible with the uh, uh, hospital uh, policy and also maybe at the time uh, if you're auditing this department you will found or you will be observed any real patient transportation and you should be uh, assist if all the required uh, for the protocols are followed or no you can also check the uh, transportation card that uh, they are used for this patient it is uh, compatible with the patient diagnosis or no for the interview you need to do the interview with the staff and ask the healthcare worker about patient transportation to assist their knowledge you can ask them about the protocol of transferring isolated patient and they should be know about this protocol and they should be also following the protocol with, at the time they will be transferred any patient under isolation precaution. Also, you can ask them about transferring time and pathway or road for the isolated patient. Uh, they should be give you the correct answer and they should be followed at the same time. They should be transfer patient uh, with uh, at a specific uh, way for transferring isolated patient and also they have uh, transfer or maybe they will be transferred in with the dedicated elevator and at the time uh, there is low traffic uh, uh, this question to you can ensure that the, the patient uh, under isolation precaution will be transferred and they will be avoid the crowded uh, and uh, interaction with other staff or other uh, healthcare worker also you can ask them uh, to they will be a brief for you uh, any uh, type of transportation card to you can check it uh, it is available and they know about this uh, transportation card you can ask them also about the transportation card what is the meaning for the uh, specific color like green when we will be used this contact precaution which type can be used for the contact precaution or airborne precaution or also the same droplet precaution and also you can ask them uh, uh, before we mentioned that the patient uh, uh, it should be or patient under isolation precaution it should be transfer only for the uh, medically necessary purpose you can ask them what about the unnecessary patient uh, mobility uh, and they should be uh, give you the correct answer that must be avoided to prevent risk of infection transmission except when they required for medical necessary purpose
sub element B3.12 for transport of patient under contact isolation precaution contain and cover all skin lesion and infected or colonized wound if available with clean bandage or dressing and instruct patient to wear clean gown and clean linen should be used for this uh, sub element we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element for the observation maybe at the time you are visit the uh, patient care area you will be observe any patient under contact isolation and he's ready for transfer to another department uh, you can absorb at that time if the patient under contact isolation uh, with skin lesion and colonized area of the patient are already covered with clean bandage and clean cleaning before they will be transferred to this patient.
For the interview, you need to do the interview with the staff and ask them about the protocol to be followed uh, before transfer patient uh, under contact isolation precaution with skin lesion. And also you can uh, ask them to, they will be described for you all the steps that should be followed in order to ensure prevent risk of infection uh, transmission. And also you can ask the staff about the patient if he need for any person protective equipment required during to the during transportation. Uh, as we mentioned uh, in the uh, sub element that uh, they should be uh, uh, contain and cover all skin lesion and infected or colonized wound if available with clean bandage and dressing and also uh, they will be instruct the patient to wear clean gown and uh, clean linen should be used at the, at the time we will be transfer uh, the patient. Sub element B3.13 for transport of patient under droplet or airport isolation precaution. Instruct the patient to wear surgical mask and follow respiratory hygiene and cup etiquette. Cover exposed skin lesion, if any, with clean bandage and or clean linens. For this uh, uh, sub element, we need for observation and staff. For the observation, uh, maybe during your visit for the patient care area, you will be observed any patient under droplet or airborne isolation precaution, and this patient he is ready to transfer to another department or another healthcare facility. 
you should be absorbed if this patient was giving uh, the appropriate instruction from the uh, healthcare worker before they will be transfer him patient he should be wear a surgical mask and also he should be follow the uh, practice of the respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette and also you will be absorbed if there is any skin lesion and it is covered already with the clean bandage and clean linens For the interview, you need to do interview with the staff and ask them about the protocol that they should be uh, follow before they will transfer any patient under droplet or airborne isolation precaution. And also you can ask them to, they will be described for you the steps that they should be uh, following in order to be ensured that the risk uh, or prevent a risk of infection uh, transmission. They should be informing from A to Z about this protocol from they will be start informing the uh, facility receiving the patient or the department receiving the patient. Also they will be transfer the patient from a dedicated pathway for transfer patient under isolation precaution and also they should be instruct the patient to the he will wear surgical mask and uh, he should be follow the uh, respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette and you can ask him also about the patient uh, person protective required during the transportation what we mentioned it is the surgical mask that the patient he should wear it and also you can ask him about the steps that should be followed in patient under droplet or airborne uh, isolation precaution at the same time he have exposed uh, skin lesion we mentioned before that it should be uh, covered uh, with the clean bandage and uh, clean uh, linen uh, all of this uh, interview you can do it with the uh, uh, staff to ensure that they are following the uh, correct uh, protocol and it is already they are uh, apply or, or follow all the requirements for this protocol
sub element B3.14, there is a screening policy for newly admitted or transferred patient to all critical care unit like ICU, CCU in ICU to identify those who require isolation precaution for this sub element to need for documentation to be review We need to review the policy or the screening policy of a new admitted or transferred patient to all critical care area unit, and it should be comprehensive and cover all infectious disease and multidrug resistant organism and blood borne disease, and also it should be fully applicable and all the elements of this policy and procedure it should be or can be applied and comply with the hospital uh, scope services, and also it's based on scientific reference. This scientific reference it should be approved by Ministry of Health like the CDC, WHO and EPIC and also this policy it should be signed from authorized person like medical director or uh, hospital director and also it should be discussed and approved by the infection control committee and it should be valid and updated within two or three years or when indicated. You need to review the patient data, either electronic or manual uh, file, to confirm if there is a really implementation of screening policy. You can check patient file who was transferred to the hospital or was newly admitted to the critical care area to be sure that the policy was followed. And also you can check lab result randomly uh, selected patient to confirm if admission screening was done or not. And you match the data of admission of critical care uh, unit with the date of sending active surveillance specimen. And uh, after that, you can confirm uh, if there is appropriate isolation uh, is started if needed based on result of active screening. All of this information you can give you, uh, uh, it can give you if there is a really implementation of screening policy in the critical care area in the hospital.
for the interview, we need to do interview and asking the healthcare worker in the uh, critical care unit. You can uh, ask or give task for any staff in this uh, area to he will be access and open the screening policy of a new admission or transfer patient to critical care unit to be ensured that there are awareness about this policy and also you can ask them about the protocol that should be followed once there is any new admission to the critical care unit and uh, maybe this it can be like a new admission or there is any uh, transferred from other healthcare facility and maybe it is transferred within the hospital from the other unit like a patient was shifted already from medical ward to ICU like that. All of this protocols you will be asked the healthcare worker and to be sure that they are awareness about the policy for the screening and also for the protocol.
sub element B3.15 patient with burn larger than 25% of total body surfaces area are kept in single room or physically separated from other patient. For this sub element we need for documentation and staff interview to we can audit this sub element. We need to review the policy and procedure for management of patient with burn larger than 25% of total body surfaces area. And we should be sure that it is already mentioned inside this policy about this patient. It should be in single room or physical separated from other patient. And also we can check the physician note or document inside the patient file uh, to be confirmed if they have any patient, uh, he, his degree, it is more than 25% of total body surfaces area. And at that time, this patient, we should be confirmed and see if this patient, he is already in single room or it is, uh, or he is uh, physical separated from other patient. For the interview, we need to do the interview with the staff and we need to ask them about the placement of patient with burn larger than 25% total body surfaces area. They should be know the answer and they should be give you a correct answer that any patient like that he have burn larger than 25% total body surfaces area, he should be uh, in single room or separated or physical separated from another uh, patient. And also we can ask them uh, why should this pair patient uh, separated uh, from other the patient uh, he should be know that we are uh, isolate or uh, separate this patient from other because it will be help to reduce the incidence of the infection due to the antibiotic resistant microorganisms sub element b3.16 portable chest x-ray is available for usage in isolation room when needed for this uh, sub element we need for absorption and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element. For the observation, we need to observe the availability of portable chest X-ray. It is available or no, and it will be used for the isolation uh, patient or isolation room or no. Uh, we can check the ER, ICU, and isolation ward. And also, we can observe the staff practice regarding any patient under isolation precaution who need or required to uh, just x-ray it will be done for him. We can be check the staff, they are preparing the patient to they will be sent him to the radiology department or they are preparing uh, the patient inside the room to they will be do it uh, for him the chest x-ray by the portable machine. And also we will be uh, observe where it will be done for him. It will be sent the patient down or it will be done inside the isolation room using a portable just x-ray. For the interview, we need to do interview and asking the healthcare worker about if we have any patient under isolation precaution and this patient need for chest x-ray. Where should be done this uh, chest x-ray for the patient? He should give you the correct answer that it is, should be done inside the isolation room by using portable chest x-ray. And also, you can ask the healthcare worker and the radiology department also about the availability of the portable chest x-ray. You should be, uh, uh, or they should be have portable chest x-ray for the isolated patient.
sub element B3.17 the required number of airborne infection isolation room should be predicted in each hospital based on the facility risk assessment or based on the national approved standard. For this, we need for documentation and staff interview and observation to be We need to review the document showing the total bed capacity and the division according to the each ward and unit in the hospital. And we need to review the risk assessment tool that should be constructed by multidisciplinary team, discuss it and approve it by the infection control committee and also by the infection revision control director in the health class. When we are reviewing the risk assessment, it should be based on the following variables, the demographic trends of the population in the catchment area, and also incident rate of the infectious airborne disease in the same facility in the last three years period, and also the healthcare facility scope of service, and further projected changes to the current services. We need For the observation, you need uh, during your visit for the hospital to observe the number of the airborne infection isolation room is consistent with the risk assessment outcome. You should be compare the number uh, that it is mentioned in the risk assessment that the hospital need uh, from the uh, airborne infection isolation room, and you should be compared to the total number of airborne infection.
for the interview you need to do interview with the infection prevention and control team members and you'll start asking about the calculation of the required hospital-wide airborne infection isolation rule and you can ask them about this requirement of airborne infection isolation room. It was calculated by using the facility risk assessment or the national approved standard. You can also ask about the number of airborne infection isolation room in the specific unit of visit and verify if they match the required number. Also, you need to ask and review the, uh, with the laboratory healthcare worker about incidence rate of the airborne infection disease such as TB, chickenpox and you can ask about the last three years or one year to have brief view about the situation in the hospital. Sub element B3.18 Airport Infection Isolation Room Specification Fulfill with the MOH required specification as the following Standard Isolation Rooms Window are sealed and fixed Opening in the walls and ceiling are sealed and airtight And doors are properly designed and sealed For this we need for observation
You need to observe if the airport infection isolation room are fulfilling with the MOH specification for the airport infection isolation room. Here we will mention some of the required specification for the Ministry of Health for the airport infection isolation room. And you can read all the specification uh, from the uh, infection control guideline for the auditing tool. Uh, this is like no window can be opened wall and ceiling are sealed and smooth one piece without crack or decorative part and all the doors should be designed with the, uh, an auto uh, closer device and also the door open to the inside the pressure monitor fix beside the outer door and all angles between walls and ceiling are rounded and there is no acute angles again if you want to read all the uh, complete uh, specification for the Ministry of Health for the airport infection isolation room. You can go and read the uh, guideline for the uh, auditing uh, tool. You can find all the uh, specification for the Ministry of Health about the infection airport isolation room. Sub element B3.19 Airport infection isolation room are under negative pressure minimum minus 2.5 pascal with air totally exhausted to outside 100% through high efficiency particular air filter. The exhaust air ducts, including that from bathroom, are independent from the of the building exhaust air system. For this, we need for documentation to we can review and evaluate this sub element. We need to review the documentation that prove that all airport infection isolation room in each unit are under monitoring for last three months to ensure that the continuous monitoring of negative pressure room to ensure that airport infection isolation room are at minimum minus 2.5 pascal all the time and also totally air exhausted to outside 100 percent through high efficiency particular air filter what we know it as HEPA filter and also the exhaust uh, air duct are independent of the building exhaust air system and should be the exhaust air tube must be away at least three from the intake lines of other department bathroom ventilation exhaust should be passed through the HEPA filter also.
sub element B3.20 there is 100% fresh air supply from central AC or cell separated unit all component of the airport infection isolation room ventilation unit are connected to emergency power supply to maintain air pressurization into the event of power uh, failure for this we need for documentation and uh, observation to we can uh, re uh, review or we can evaluate and audit this sub element You need to review the documentation regarding to airport infection isolation room to ensure that the policy of the airport infection isolation room should be with the fresh air supply method as recommended. And also you can call the maintenance or the, or the biomedical engineer to provide you with the document that prove that the fresh air supply to the airport infection isolation room as recommended and under their responsibility. And also check if there is any emergency plan showing that all components of the airport infection isolation room ventilation unit are connected to emergency power supply to maintain air pressurization in the event of the power failure. You will be observe each airport infection isolation room in a hospital to ensure that there is 100% fresh air supply from central AC or cancel separated unit and all the components of the airport infection isolation ventilation unit supply and exhaust are connected to emergency power supply to maintain air pressurization in the event of the power failure. Sub element B3.21 There is fixed monitor outside the patient room in the corridor to continuously monitoring the pressure difference between the patient room and the corridor with activation of audio visual alarm when the ventilation system failed. For this, we need for
You need to observe the availability of fixed negative pressure monitor outside the airport infection isolation room. Fixed monitor should be installed outside each airport infection isolation room in the corridor to monitor the pressure difference between the room and the corridor, and it should be with an uh, audio visual alarm when the ventilation system fails. And also, you can test the monitor to ensure that the alarm working or not by keeping the door of airport infection isolation room open for a few seconds. Also, there must be clearly audible uh, sound from the fixed monitor along with the red flashing uh, light.
sub element P3.22, there is evidence of regular monitoring of negative pressure difference of airport infection isolation rooms daily when in use patient isolated inside weekly when not in use no patient isolated and monthly check by maintenance personnel for this uh, we need for documentation and observation to we can evaluate and audit the sub element You need to review each document regarding to airport infection isolation room to ensure that there is clear policy for regular monitoring of negative pressure difference of airport infection isolation room and all the documents that prove of regular monitoring of negative pressure room different for the airport infection isolation room for at least the last three months you will be review all of the documentation it should be daily when it is used or there is a patient in uh, admitted in in the isolation room weekly when it is not used or there is no patient and monthly it should be checked by the maintenance person you should be review all this document to prove that the maintenance personnel are monitoring airport infection isolation room monthly
you need to observe airport infection isolation room in different patient care area in the hospital to ensure that the policy of regular monitoring of negative pressure difference is followed for the occupied and non-occupied airport infection isolation room if it is occupied you will be absorbed the daily monitoring if it is unoccupied you will absorb the weekly monitoring and here we want to mention that the pressure from the monitoring device installed at the entrance of the airport infection isolation room it should be recorded daily in the logbook designated for the this purpose by the responsible of nursing staff in the department you will be check this documentation and you can see if there is regular monitoring for the negative pressure difference sub element p3.23 air exchange of airport infection isolation room is equal or more 12 air change per hour with monthly monitoring for this we need for documentation to we can review and evaluate this sub element review all documents that prove the air change of airport infection isolation room is 12 or more air change per hour and this it is monitored at least monthly and all of this document it should be in the uh, or it should be available in the unit when you are visit any isolation room in any department it should be have a copy inside this department it's not acceptable they will say it is only with the maintenance or biomedical uh, department they should have uh, a copy from uh, this uh, monitoring for the uh, air change per hour and they should Sub element P3.24 Airport infection isolation room are used only for isolation of suspected or confirmed cases with airport infectious disease. For this, we need for documentation, observation, staff interview, to we can evaluate and audit this sub element. Review the policy of airport infection isolation room 
to ensure that the airport infection isolation room are used for isolation of suspected or confirmed cases with airport infectious disease only and you will be reviewed the patient file or medical record and confirm the diagnosis if the patient is need for airport isolation and also you can observe the airport infection isolation room during audit round in the hospital to ensure that the airport infection isolation room are occupied only with patients that require airport infection isolation room. Verify if consistent with patient diagnosis in the medical record. Sub element P3.25 Bronchoscopy should be performed only in a room with negative air pressure, a minimum of 12 air exchange per hour, and discharged through HIPAA filter system. Refer to airport infection isolation room specification. For this sub element, we need for observation and staff interview. You need to review the documentation that prove that all airport infection isolation room for the bronchoscopy procedure are under monitoring for last three months to ensure that the continuous monitoring of negative pressure to ensure that all airport infection isolation room are under negative pressure at all the time. And also you need to review the log uh, sheet displaying monitoring of air change per hour that it should be minimum 12 air change per hour is required and also air is exhausted outside 100 percent through high efficiency particular filter and also the exhaust air duct are independent of the building exhaust air system
for the observation you need to observe airport infection isolation room for the bronchoscopy procedure in the endoscopy department to ensure that the negative pressure room where the bronchoscopy is performed fulfills the requirement of an airport infection isolation room in order to prevent the risk associated with any air solo generation procedure and also to be sure that there is 100% fresh air supply from the central AC or cancelled uh, separated unit and also you need to observe all engineering control measures with help of the biomedical engineer to ensure that all specifications are met. For the interview, ask the healthcare worker if there is any dedicated airport infection isolation room for all bronchoscopy procedure. And also you can ask about the specification to be followed for the airport infection isolation precaution and assist the staff knowledge and also ask the staff.